So the AI industry is actually starting to heat up once again, as DeepSeek is actually rushing to launch their new AI model, DeepSeek R2. If you aren't familiar with DeepSeek's models, I'm pretty sure you haven't been following the AI space or this channel. But this is a company that completely put the AI industry on a hold because they did something that nobody expected. They managed to make a really good frontier model for a fraction of the cost. Apparently now, they're looking to launch their second iteration, R2, and I think this is even more concerning given the state of the AI industry. So you can see right here that it actually states that DeepSeek is planning to release this in early May, but they now want to release it as early as possible. So this is super interesting because it was only recently where DeepSeek managed to leapfrog other companies in terms of the price to output and in terms of quality. But what we have here is an incredible situation that may turn the AI industry on its head. If they can actually get R2, which will be the second iteration of their thinking model, to anywhere near the quality that we've recently seen from Frontier Labs like Anthropic and OpenAI for a fraction of the cost, then this could seriously put the Western AI nations, or should I say Western AI companies, in a very interesting predicament. Currently, I don't think developers and users have any loyalties to these brands. Of course, a lot of these brands do have, you know, brand names like ChatGPT, of course, Grok and Elon Musk, but many developers are always seeking cheaper prices and they're wondering how they can reduce costs for their apps or their software applications. And one of the key areas that they're actually going to be focusing on is going to be coding. So in this article, it actually talks about how the company says that it hopes that the new model will produce better coding and be able to reason in languages beyond English. Now, the reason I'm actually talking about coding here is because I do believe that coding is one of the hardest tasks to do in AI. So if we do get to a stage where DeepSeek actually does better coding than Claude 3.5 or 3.6 Sonnet, then that is going to be super interesting because that would basically remove Claude's entire market share. And it wouldn't be the first time that this company has put the AI industry on hold. For example, if we look at these recent coding benches, if we look at the agentic coding evaluation using Devon, you can see right here that the model that performs the best is, of course, the Sonnet 3.7, which is a 67% compared to DeepSeek R1, which is 51%. And you can see that other Frontier models also significantly outpace DeepSeek R1. But what happens if DeepSeek R2 manages to surpass Sonnet 3.7 or even manages to get wedged in between here? I think this would mark a very pivotal moment for the AI industry, as coding is something that many individuals do focus on and they are currently using to build our apps and many different pieces of software. So you can see right here, this is also another benchmark that's super interesting. This is the ADA Polyglot Coding Benchmark, and this is a tool designed to evaluate how effectively AI language models can translate natural coding requests into executable code that passes unit tests. Basically, this benchmark analyzes a variety of different code, and it assesses not only the model's coding ability, but also the capacity to edit existing code and format those edits appropriately for integration into source files. Now, what we can see here is that, very interestingly, we can see DeepSeek R1 is actually one of the cheapest among its competitors. We can see that when we look at the total cost versus the performance metrics that we're getting right here, we can see this is the only one that's $13, and it's pretty high in terms of the score, whereas the other ones are like $18, 36 even 100 Now, I will say that it's quite likely that people will prefer accuracy over anything. So while yes, the cost is going to matter, I do think for many different applications, this is something that they will have to focus on. On in terms of the fact that, look, accuracy will be important for DeepSeek if they're going to get that. But I think one of the things that makes DeepSeek so unique is the fact that their accuracy doesn't matter that much. Of course, it's pretty accurate, but their price is so low that so many people want to use it because it's basically free. Now, if we also look at the LMSYS arena scores, this is, of course, the qualitative benchmark, which actually uses individuals such as yourself to look at how you can rank this. We can actually see the DeepSeek R1 is only third in terms of the leaderboard space, and even Claude 3.7 Sonnet does actually rank lower on this benchmark. I do have to say, however, that this benchmark is quite likely going to be one where vibes are really important. So for example, I do think models like GPT 4.5 would do well here, and I wouldn't really think that thinking models would do that well, but it's going to be interesting to see where DeepSeek R2 does, because if they once again manage to leapfrog companies, and of course I don't think these benchmarks are all that important, but I'll say it will go to show the quality that they're going to be able to do. And also, if they're able to get their second iteration out very, very quickly, as early as May, which is only 60, 90 days from now, I think it's going to be a remarkable turnaround in terms of how they're managing to do this. And I think that would be rather worrying, because imagine you're a company that's able to churn out models really quickly for a fraction of the cost. The feedback loop in terms of improving each model cycle is going to get quicker each time. 
time. So it's going to be very, very interesting. And one of the things about R2, which is, you know, really worrying people, is that recently DeepSeek actually released some information on Twitter. They actually spoke on day six of their open source week that there was one more thing they wanted to talk about. They spoke about the stats of their online service and the fact that their profit margin was 545%. That means they're actually a profitable company now. If you've been in AI, you'll know that most of the AI companies aren't really making money. They're actually burning money. They have to continuously get more and more funding to keep training these models. For example, OpenAI has had to have a $5 billion loss this year on a $3.7 billion revenue. Now, of course, the revenue is growing year over year, which is good, but many people are speculating that these Western tech companies are simply spending money on things that they won't need. I don't think that this is the case in this specific scenario. I think AI is a specific scenario where you do need to spend a lot of money up front, and the profits will come later down the line once these gains are realized. But it is starting to beg the question, which is why the stock market kind of took a massive dive. Look, if these companies can actually be profitable and have have continued users, how on earth is OpenAI losing billions of dollars in revenue? One of the things that you have is that models like GPT 4.5 require significant investment in computational resources and infrastructure. Remember with GPT 4 that apparently cost over a hundred million dollars to train? Those expenses actually contribute to the company's projected losses, such as this five billion dollar loss that you're seeing right here. Of course, OpenAI has invested into Stargate, the initiative where they want to have massive data centers for future inference, but what is interesting about that is even despite these losses, OpenAI actually continues to gain substantial investments due to its potential for long-term profitability. Apparently, every single fundraiser round for OpenAI is oversubscribed. Basically, every time they go for a round where people are allowed to invest, these investors are so eager to invest in OpenAI that some of them don't even get the chance to do so, which of course, for OpenAI, is most certainly a great problem to have. And as you can see right here, Sam Altman actually posted a tweet about this thing saying, we are currently losing money on OpenAI Pro subscriptions. People use it much more than we expected. Now, something that I do think is interesting and something that a lot of people are overlooking is the fact that while, yes, other companies are making money, I do think the point of this is that every single year, the price of tokens does dramatically fall. Because you can see right here, first GPT-4 was 36 per a million tokens, then GPT-4 Turbo was 41 per million, then it was 7, then 4. Then you can see GPT-4 Mini was 25 cents per million. This is something that continues to get cheaper and cheaper as the AI industry matures. The fact is, every year, the price of these models per token of intelligence will continue to go down. And I think this is somewhat of a bad thing. Some people have said, look, how are you guys going to make any profit from this if other companies are going to continue to undercut you? But I think that this is just something that actually benefits OpenAI because essentially the service they're providing is going to be nearly free. And provided they have a good brand, then they're going to have one of the best products that people continue to want to use. Now, even if DeepSeek does manage to release R2, I do think that the rollout may be a bit shaky. R2, of course, is going to be the second iteration of the model. It says here that the release may further galvanize Chinese authorities and companies, dozens of which have started integrating DeepSeek models into their products. Basically, what they're worried about is the fact that DeepSeek is probably going to be banned. A few weeks ago, many government agencies and countries, including South Korea and Australia, have blocked access to Chinese AI startup DeepSeek, mostly for government employees. So you know, certain countries are not taking this well. They do not want DeepSeek on their phones. Of course, they are basically thinking that it may be spyware or something like that. And for government safety, this is going to be banned. I actually do wonder if it's going to be another TikTok situation where they basically ban the app due to the situation where they think it's a national security risk. But overall, I think that they should really be worried about China potentially surpassing them in the race to AGI. So what do you guys think about R2? Are you actually excited for the competition? Because I think that it's actually good for us because it's actually going to force OpenAI to release certain models and speed up certain releases. I think it's going to be super interesting to see what happens with R2 if it does manage to come out sometime in the next month. I think it would be super, super interesting considering that the companies typically take months and months to release new frontier models but i cannot wait to see where things go next and with that being said that's it for today's video i'll see you guys again very very soon with another